That's it. I'm out of here. Well, this isn't much better. Drawn again. Well, it's that time of year. The holidays are upon us. I'm back home where I belong, and I am ready to kick back on the couch with my favorite nondescript festive beverage and get this season started right. Oh! <coughs> wow! I am kind of bummed it hasn't snowed yet, though. It doesn't feel like Christmas until it has. I this year I want to be engulfed by this stuff. I like a like a penguin. This year I want to feel like a penguin. And who can I turn to to help me with my penguin fantasies? Why none other than my good old friends at Rocket Snail Games. They developed Club Penguin. Whoa! Yeah, now you got it. Y'all ready for a limited introduction to the background of Rocket Snail Games? Ready, set. Go! Rocket Snail Games is a game development studio founded in 1999 by the one and only Lance Prieb. And by one and only, I mean that literally. It's just him. He's the studio. He created Rocket Snail as a personal studio to help him develop intellectual property and games he's passionate to work on. Does this mean he made every game by himself? I mean, I can't prove that he didn't. Look at this guy. I have no reason to believe he couldn't create an entire multi-layered online world between bites of a scone. In actuality, his bigger projects usually involve him working on a larger team, sometimes still operating under the moniker of Rocket Snail, but often forming completely different companies like Hyper Hippo or Screenzilla. All this to say, Rocket Snail is effectively a representation of Lance Prieb as a game designer and producer. Do you follow? No? Good, me neither. Most of the information that I found came from their official website, which fortunately for us also includes a list of all the games they've worked on, so I thought it'd be fun to look through them all and see how Rocket Snail has developed throughout the years. And by that, of course, I mean let's look at like three of their games and then briefly mention some other ones. Sound good? Yeah, let's go! I'm not gonna beat around the bush here, the title on this list that draws the most attention is Club Penguin. That and most of the early games just feed into it, so I figure we'll start there and work our way out. Now you could literally talk about Club Penguin by itself for hours, so many hours, and I don't want to do that, so let's just get the basics covered. Club Penguin was largely a passion project of Lance Prieb, alongside his buddies Lane Merrifield and Dave Crisco. <laughs> I bet that guy's smooth. <laughs> The trio wanted to make an online community that kids could go on that was extremely fun and captivating while still being safe and wholesome. Honestly, a pretty noble effort. Uh, they decided to name it Club Penguin because they liked the idea of an online club and they made the avatars penguins, apparently because Lance had a Far Side comic on his desk that featured penguins. Hey, it ain't Ibsen, but it still needs story. And what came next, I don't think anyone could have predicted. Club Penguin absolutely skyrocketed in popularity. Every kid was playing it. I had made an account back in the day sheerly from peer pressure from all my friends who were hooked on the game. It was truly a pivotal game for my generation. It was like this wonderful online playground where you got to walk around, chat with friends, make an igloo, adopt a pet, play oodles of minigames, and do just about anything else your little penguin heart desired. Now I can sit back as a cynical 20-something and say that Club Penguin didn't deserve all the hype it got, but no. The hype was more than warranted. It was a solid game. It saw frequent updates, often tying to the seasons, giving kids ample reason to keep coming back. It had loads of mini games that were fun to play in their own right, tons of customizable clothing and accessories for your penguin, special themed events. It was a packed experience, and it was all free! Well, kinda. Now you can make an account and live your little penguiny life all you wanted, but a lot of the hot ticket features were locked behind the paywall of a membership program. And that costed money. Or, more accurately, it costed your parents money. I still remember bugging my mom for a Club Penguin membership only for her to give the game a long look and decide there's probably better things for her to be spending her money on. Like, I get it, but come on, Ma! You're saying this isn't worth $7.95 a month? I want my penguin to wear a dress, dang it! Now, all the footage you've been seeing thus far actually hasn't been from the original game. I'm sneaky like that. Now, since the original game has been taken down, private servers have come forth to keep the Club Penguin name alive. And this one happens to be Club Penguin Rewritten. The main benefit to using a private server like this, other than the fact that it's literally the only way to play the game now is that the whole membership paywall 
completely gone. You have access to absolutely everything at the get-go for free. And I gotta say, this is living. And the people behind these servers are treating it really seriously, too. They update the game with the season just like the original. Sometimes they even add their own unique items or clothes, and they still do the events from time to time. Like in the original game, sometimes mascot characters, basically Club Penguin employees acting as characters from the Club Penguin universe, would hop onto servers and give kids unique items, and they still do that here. Not to brag, but I do have autographs from both Sensei and the Antarctic, and it only took over an hour of waiting. You can see them at the top of my LinkedIn profile. Anyway, that was a bit of a side tangent. Let's get back to Rocket Snail. Have you ever wanted to go deep into the development history of Club Penguin? No? Well, too late. Here we go! Whoa! Oh. Huh. Is that right? No, no, I see. I'm following. What is this? Am I controlling a potato sack with feet stuck in purgatory? I somehow knew it would come to this. So this is Experimental Penguins, the earliest test thing for what would end up being Club Penguin. And I gotta say, excellently named. It's experimental. Pretty sure that's a penguin. Wonderful. There really isn't much to this thing. You just type in your name, select your room, and then you're just thrust into the cold, bleak world like so. <laughs> Which, funnily enough, that's how I was born. So what I'm playing here is actually a single-player demo on the Rocket Snail website. The original was a chat room where you could go to socialize with other creepy penguins, but even then it looks just as bare bones. Right now, I'm in the snow room. Yep. Then there's the North Pole. Yep. And last but not least, the crash site. Yeah, that one's a bit better. Like I said, not much to this one, but I will say it is totally worth it just to see this little nugget waddling around. Oh, it's so nice. So Experimental Penguins went on to become a series of tests called Penguin Chat 1 through 3. For the most part, they just served as further polishing and testing for what the team wanted from Club Penguin. Experimental Penguins is the only one that I could find and still interact with, and it's easily the most interesting one of the bunch. But aside from that streamline of Club Penguin prototypes, we also have some outlier games that feed into Club Penguin. Like Ballistic Biscuit! Which is, of course, what I will be asking you to refer to me as from now on. It's basically just a Hydro Hopper from Club Penguin, but with humans. Gross. Ah, but there's a penguin! We can never escape, can we? Then we have Moncala Snails, which you could say went on to be the Moncala game in Club Penguin, but Lance didn't invent Moncala, so I'm not counting it. At the very least, it's a more visually interesting version of the Club Penguin one, and it finally ties us into the latter half of the company title, so that's cool. The odd one out in these early games seems to be Word Crunch. It's just a simple word search game where you find a word, then the puzzle shifts, rinse and repeat 20 times, and then you're done. Now, I know it's probably the least interesting game on this list, but it goes to show that to be a game designer, you need to be willing to experiment with with the kinds of games you design, and it's worth saying that this is a very tightly made game. So let's all take a moment to appreciate Word Crunch. Okay, that's enough. So Club Penguin was the gold standard of online children's entertainment for the better part of the 2000s, but, like all good things, it was not for this world for much longer. It just steadily declined in popularity as the years went on for a number of reasons, and they tried their darndest to keep it afloat with a bunch of events sanctioned by their now parent company Disney, but they just couldn't get the web traffic that they used to have. The internet was evolving, and Club Penguin just kind of became a relic of its time in many ways. Other online games were becoming much easier to play, and with social media media taking off, there really wasn't much reason to talk online through the beak of a penguin anymore. You could technically still get your fix with Club Penguin Island for a while if you're that kind of a person, but Rocket Snail had nothing to do with that, so we ain't going there just yet. So with Club Penguin over and done, Rocket Snail was free to move on to their next big thing. And by next big thing, I mean they really only did little things here and there. Lance would mainly produce games such as Adventure Capitalist and Adventure Communist, but in 2017, they finally released their big new project. And it had very little to do with Club Penguin, so honestly it was a nice change of pace. Whoop. You know, strangely, it feels kind of close. Epic Snails was a new IP in town. You control military snails with cannons and other artillery on their shells who go to various locales and fight in team battle royales. I think I can best compare it to the Worms games, but instead of being turn-based, you get to move around and shoot whenever you want. It's actually a really interesting game, and it's free to play on Steam. It just oozes that rocket snail charm that I crave. <laughs> Oh, I love it.
love it. While the models are a bit blocky, these snails are adorable. And the whole thing just has this lovely cartoony aesthetic that just makes me feel so good in everything from the guns to the maps to the music. Although the snow maps theme sounds eerily similar to the music in Chicken Run. How dare you. So the main gimmick of this game is that since you're a snail, you can effectively move anywhere. Like, literally anywhere. You can go up walls, hang on ceilings, go into tubes, get abducted by aliens. And it's a really fun mechanic. I found myself having a lot of fun just exploring each map to see where the best vantage point was to attack other players. The main downside is it makes it a bit difficult to control your little snail as you're slithering all over the place, and you often get caught on objects that you don't want to and you're just kind of stuck for a bit. Like... <laughs> Let me throw! And overall, while this game has a lot to offer, a lot of the time it feels a bit unfinished. I mean, unless that's supposed to happen. Who am I to judge? To be fair, I think it actually is unfinished. It's listed on the website as a current project, and there's notes for updates and whatnot, but considering it was released in 2017 and hasn't seen any major changes other than some new maps and some new items, Epic Snails may very well have been shelved for the time being, and that's kind of a shame. It's still really fun, and it has a lot of potential. It just needs some major fine-tuning and a lot more content. I was actually a bit surprised to see that when I was playing, I was able to run into other people to play with, but it didn't happen very often, so it's not getting a whole lot of use right now. And even when it was newer, it never saw the success that Club Penguin saw. I really hope they do something with this game. I would love to see it get a massive update here in a few years that makes it more of a full game, but I feel like in order to justify that, they would need to start charging money for it, and that might hurt its chances for success. Eh, oh well. We'll see. Keep Epic Snails on your radar. Or, or heck, go play some of it for yourself. You might run into me. And finally, we settled on Rocket Snails' newest IP. In a bold move to really experiment with the games they're capable of creating, they risked it all and they made Club Penguin again. I mean, can you blame them? Their newest endeavor is a game called Box Critters. And I'm not exaggerating at all. It's pretty much just Club Penguin again. And honestly, that's okay. It's still in early development, but they do have servers that you can play on with little rooms to explore, people to chat with, and items to collect. And it already has a pretty stable following, which is impressive considering there really isn't much to do in it. It's got the open world of Club Penguin down, but from what I can see, there's no mini games in it yet, and that's a big thing missing here. In Club Penguin, if you got bored, you could always go sledding or play Aqua Grabber or Card Jitsu. Here, if you get bored, you just stop playing. It looks like this is where Rocket Snail is putting most of their efforts nowadays, which is really good because I think it has a lot of potential, but unfortunately that likely means that poor Epic Snails is gonna be left by the wayside. Box Critters has already grown so much since it got started a year ago, but it's got a long way to go before it gets to Club Penguin levels of popularity and quality. I think they have it in them though. And even if they don't get there, it's still a cute little chat room to mess around with. And it too has the Rocket Snail charm in spades. At the end of the day, most of the games in this list aren't much to write home about, but they all have this fun, bouncy energy that is more than worth the price of admission, especially since it's usually free. I think what Rocket Snail excels at more than anything else is the ability to create fun and inviting worlds that you can just enjoy being in for a while. I know most of the work that old Lance has done is completely overshadowed by Club Penguin, but they all seem to have the same amount of love and care and creativity put into them, and there's always at least someone who's playing them, so they have an audience. While I don't think I'm going to frequently return to Epic Snail, or box critters, I know I will return to them. They're just too much fun to stay away from. I think the overall feel of Rocket Snail games is best described by Lance himself. In his description on the website, he says he considers Rocket Snail his digital toy company with the goal of delighting fans around the world. A very noble goal, and I will be the first to say, he succeeded. I mean, the sheer fact that there are private servers for Club Penguin that still get so much web traffic nowadays, and the fact that you still see people playing Epic Snails, and there are so many people already playing Box Critters despite the fact that it's really early in development, showcases just how much these games can have an effect on people. At the end of the day, he's at least got a fan in me. So if you got some free time this holiday season, go give his games a try. I'm sure they're only getting better and better. And until the next Box Critters update, I will wait with fervent anticipation for what new ways Rocket Snail will put a smile on my face. Rocket Snail, you're a company that may... Huh. I wonder who that could be.